is a recording of this year's virtual residency fair. We'd like to take the time to thank the programs that volunteered their time to present to this year's applicants. This year's PMNR Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by PMNR Recap and Ultrasound Guidance. PMNR Recap is the leading resource for your physiatry board preparation, clinical preparation, audition rotations, and beyond. PMNR Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and oral board cases to help you become the best physiatrist that you can be. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. Ultrasound Guidance is the innovative new on online ultrasound learning platform that gives you instant access to expert instruction. With rapid scans and complete scans of every joint and peripheral nerve, Ultrasound Guidance is the perfect way to jumpstart your MSK ultrasound learning. Visit ultrasoundguidance.com to learn more. My name is uh, Jim Atchison. I'm the program director of a new program that is starting at uh, Mayo Clinic in Florida in collaboration with Books Rehabilitation. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. And I'm going to introduce my program coordinator, Serena Patrickera, and she's going to try to answer questions for you on chat as I'm running through some of the uh, slides and, and doing the talk. First thing I'd like to do is introduce you to the Mayo brothers and the father, W.W. Mayo in the center, uh, originated the Mayo Clinic in Rochester in the eight, late 1880s uh, timeframe. And the two sons, Charles and Will, turned it into what... Um, developed into the, the academic medical center that it's become over the years. And, and we're proud to follow that tradition in Florida. That includes the, the idea that we are a three shield practice. We do patient care, research, and education. So all of our areas of interest are gonna be centered in one of those three shields. And certainly in PM&R, it's not been a shield at Mayo Clinic Florida to this point. So we're, we're pleased that we're going to have the opportunity to add it. When we talk about patient care at the Mayo Clinic, you're going to hear something very regularly if you would come to our program, which is the needs of the patient come first. And that's still the primary value of Mayo Clinic. And we try to practice like that daily in the clinics. And so that would be part of what you're going to hear and think about as you come to our program. So some campus highlights to start with. We opened Mayo Clinic in Florida in 1986. Originally, there were about 30 doctors and 200 people. Uh, currently, there's 400 plus physicians, 5,800 people uh, assisting and supporting the staff to, to help with patient care. We are the number one ranked hospital in Florida by US News and World Report. And the recent rankings just came out again. So we're pleased to stay there. There is expansion going on in beds, but one of the big things that's expanded over the years is the GME program. There are now more than 250 residents and fellows on campus. So even though we're starting a new program in PM&R, it's not like we're not going to have a group of peers and colleagues and teaching programs to uh, make that work correctly. And so we're just joining into an already robust educational program from there. At Mayo Clinic Florida, we primarily do outpatient PM&R, which is why we've collaborated with Brooks Rehabilitation, who in Jacksonville, Florida, would be the premier inpatient rehabilitation center, and their faculty is going to be providing the teaching and training on the inpatient side. Brooks opened more than 50 years ago, initially with a small rehabilitation hospital. They've grown immensely over the years. Now as an organization, they've got two IRFs, two subacute centers. One of the things that I would say is very intriguing and unusual in my many years in rehab is an outpatient neuro recovery center. Patients come in, work out on their own. They have a clinical research center regarding specific rehabilitation activities. And then they have a very robust adaptive sports program, which they're very proud of. They currently are the number one ranked hospital in Florida for physical rehabilitation through Newsweek. And in the recent U, uh, U.S. News and World Report rankings, they came out as the highest ranked hospital in Florida from those standards also. So they continue to show activities that are going to be good with our academic interests. We are a new program. We just recently received our initial accreditation from ACGME to start taking candidates in the match. That will begin next July. So we are in the match this year. 
We are going to be a categorical program, which means all four years are going to be on site. So the first year will be a preliminary year in medicine here. And then the second, third, and fourth years will be a combination of activities in the two primary rehabilitation centers. We will be taking two residents per year to start with. This is a little bit look at the kind of template for the rotation pattern that's going to go on during the preliminary year. You know, many of the medicine requirements are set by the American Board of PM&R. I will point out that one of the things we think is uh, attractive and unique perhaps in, in the preliminary year here is there is a night medicine rotation. Uh, they're proud to say that there are no 24-hour shifts for the PGY1s. It's going to be a day shift, a night shift, uh, one or the other, but in certainly seeing the medicine patients at Mayo, which are a complex group for your training. On the right-hand side, you see some of the areas of topics that we wanted to include as the additional weeks so that they'll be supportive for you when you come on to PGY2, neurology, rheumatology issues. And then the board uh, only allows four weeks of training during PGY1 in PM&R. So that's why we've got a couple of weeks of introduction each in our clinic and with Brooks, but not a lot of exposure based on the requirements. Brooks, as I said, will be the primary inpatient center. Spinal cord injury, brain injury, stroke, they have very large services in all these areas, including complex medical patients, especially the Mayo patients that go over to Brooks. We do a lot of transplant and oncology management at Mayo Clinic Florida. Those patients often have functional decline and will need the inpatient rehabilitation service as well as the specifics of having amputee training, pediatric rehabilitation. There is an inpatient pediatric unit at Brooks. And then for the 12th month on our tentative schedule right now, it will be a selective, which means you can choose to go back through any of the other rotations that you want for the extra month in order to catch up if you didn't want something, or if that's your strong area of interest, you can add another month in there. Similarly, we will do that in the outpatient rotations where you see a list of different things that will occur. Emphasis a lot on musculoskeletal and ultrasound uh, rotations as well as spine and pain. We think mostly on campus, we do musculoskeletal, spine and mobility with neurology and uh, most cancer and transplant patients once again. So those are kind of the, the different exposures you get in the different clinics on campus. The board also has requirements about additional training, and I'm sure you've heard these from other programs, but we do have a very advanced neurophysiology lab at Mayo Clinic Florida run by neurology. During the rotation, you'll be working with them, some of the experts in the country. Uh, interestingly, I recently was talking with Dr. Rubin, who is the neurologist that runs it, and he was telling me he wrote the chapter in the, uh, the new rehab pocket book that everybody's using probably during their internship. So we have a good exposure to, to the areas that are going to be important with EMG consultations. There is an outpatient pediatric rotation. And then each year, we are going to have some research elective time, which we'll talk a little bit more about under the research heading. Very um, diverse and complex didactic courses is our plan. We will look at a regular presentation schedule on Wednesday. Some particulars that are hopefully going to be attractive are anatomy lab during PGY2. During the months that you are on campus at Mayo, we'll be having anatomy lab training sessions in the simulation center. Um, there is a specific neurophysiology course as you're learning about EMGs that you'll rotate with neurology and their fellows during the start of PGY3 and then begin to do more procedures from there. We expect to be able to meet the 200 procedures without difficulties based on the volumes at Mayo Clinic, which are thousands of EMGs. Also, journal clubs. One of the other areas we want to work on is administration, teaching young doctors about how you run hospitals and programs. And so the staff meetings where we have medical staff meetings at both centers are going to be open to all of our residents. Some meetings will have more requirements. Others will be optional, but it'll certainly be learning the, the administrative part of medicine along with the other things. I did mention we're going to have a required research component. 
That will start during PGY2, where you'll have an introduction from the director of research at Brooks with you know, research modeling, et cetera. There is a little time on each rotation to work on it, but then there's bigger blocks if necessary. And that's why we kind of call them research slash elective blocks. We'll let residents apply to the program director is I need a bigger block for research. Okay, here's the goals and what are we going to accomplish then? Or my research is really coming along pretty well. I'd like to do a, a two-week stint in hand clinic or something like that. So we're going to look at how the the those elective and research times are, are going to play out as people get the opportunity to, to stratify them. So we'll have a resident uh, presentation day. I was smiling as I kind of went through my slides again. You know, the first group coming through is PGY2s. It's not going to be a real big research day because we'll only be having two people at a time, but certainly that's going to grow and we'll combine it probably with some other programs that do similar things at Mayo Clinic. On the PM&R services, a uh, call will occur only during the rotations. When you are on the inpatient services, there'll be night call one night a week on each of the services, different night depending on which service you're on, so that can be kept straight. Um, call from home, fielding calls about rehabilitation issues. Brooks does have hospitalists covering at night, and so there won't be a a uh, call generally for, you know, somebody stopped breathing or found unresponsive. Now, those are important issues for training. So some of what we've been working on is how do you learn those things when you aren't actually going to take some of that call? So we're planning to use our simulation lab to develop some of those skills for people like, okay, I get called and I'm at home and the person's got an O2 sat of 85, et cetera, and having chest pain. All right. Well, that one's probably a no-brainer, but we're going to work through some other different scenarios so we can hopefully train everybody to be able to go take call if they need to once they would leave the program. There are teaching opportunities in our program, medical students rotating all the time through the services, as well as other residents, and some of them you'll probably get to know during the preliminary year, and they'll want to come do a rotation with us. So, those are good opportunities. I know benefits is going to be a big question. So probably as you start asking online with Serena, uh, Mayo currently PGY one year starts at a little more than $67,000, goes up about $3,000 per year. There's malpractice coverage, medical coverage. Um, if you have family coverage, you can purchase the family plan versus the individual. There's options for other types of coverage, et cetera. Another important area in Mayo Clinic is the wellness and employee assistance program, not just for trainees or residents. We have this extensively through all of our areas for all staff, all consultants, all people there. We will use that to help with wellness throughout your residency. And pleased to announce we're opening a new fitness center right on campus. So you'd be able to work out either before you start or at the end of the day. And, and that's likely going to be very helpful. Benefits are, are pretty extensive. Once again, we have links, which um, Renato forwarded to you some of the links we have about our program. There are links on there for all of the benefits listed at Mayo Clinic. So you can get a sense of all the things you would be having. A big question always is vacation, travel, et cetera. So all levels from PGY1 through PGY4, you'll have 20 vacation days plus holidays, ability to take care of yourself from a health and wellness standpoint. Trips are very much structured. You get one, what we call an attendance trip throughout your residency, meaning you're going someplace to learn as a uh, attendant. You're not necessarily presenting. We have a lot more opportunity for residents to go present. And I noticed I put at the bottom our AAP and r and AAP logos because that's where a lot of people go to present. But you would have the opportunity to present there each year, several times if you've got different things going on, even being on some of the committees for those organizations would allow you to meet the, the travel policies. So we're very much trying to support the interaction of presenting your research, doing things academically with uh, learning the business of uh, medicine and PM&R through the organizations. The last step, obviously, is you taking your boards and certainly 
at the end of the, your fourth year, there are the written boards currently still in PM&R. We have oral boards, which people will take uh, a little bit later. So those things, we're trying to prepare everybody to be able to pass the boards. And as you look at other programs, those are probably things you want to think about in terms of what is their board pass rate, et cetera. Let me take just a moment in order to introduce you to Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, this is our skyline downtown. We are south of this. You wouldn't see this view from our campus, but it does have this kind of picturesque pattern. Just for you who don't know, we're in the northeast corner of Florida. That is not the ocean. That is the St. John's River running through Jacksonville. And those of you who like a little trivia, it would be one of the few rivers in North America that runs from south to north instead of north to south. So it's a different current pattern here than in most places. This is an outdoor recreation place. We have beaches. We have a lot of outside activities. We have good weather almost all the year, although I was joking with Renato that lately we haven't seen quite that blue sky. It's been raining a fair amount here, but still we, we've got more outdoor activities going on than, than anything else around this area. You can see how far it is from some of the other areas that you would possibly be interested in traveling to. Thought I'd throw in something a little bit different. I mentioned Brooks Adaptive Sports Program. Surfing is a big deal in Jacksonville for all people. There's a lot of surfers around here, and I thought it was particularly appropriate that we might share a uh, adaptive sports moment from the, the Brooks uh, surfing program to see, which I find a, a most amazing slide and always like to put up. Here are the links, which I believe are also on the um, site that Renato forwarded to you to talk okay, about yep. Five us. minutes. Good, and talk about us and our program, as well as the preliminary year program, Brooks in general, and then graduate medical education in, in Jacksonville. So a lot of uh, good information there if you're interested in our program, and then certainly from there, specific questions, if you don't have them addressed tonight or think of something different, obviously we'll come back to us. I'll post my email address in just a moment. I wanted to finish with a slide about our faculty, and these are our core faculty as we start the program. We have probably eight to 10 others that'll see people at different times throughout their rotations. But the point as we developed the program and went through our ACGME review was that this is a group of uh, physiatrists who currently practice and do these things that we're talking about. They run their own services. We don't have to rely on people to do our work for us. So we're very excited about having people come in that we can teach and possibly educate in what we think are the right ways to do what we do, but we don't need people to come in and do our work for us. And so you see smiles, excitement, those are the things we're looking forward to as we start to develop the, the framework for this residency program. And once again, if there are questions, we're happy to take those tonight, or if not, these are the email addresses for Serena and myself uh, down the road. So. Thank you, Dr. Uh, we did have one question. Yeah. Um, someone asked in the audience if we prefer osteopathic students to have both USMLE 2 and Comlex 2. So currently uh, those are under the guidelines of the entire Mayo Clinic Graduate Medical Education Center and we accept either. It's not that a person has to have both. Okay, and we had a next question. Being a new program, are you filing PGY2 positions for next year? No, we will be starting with PGY1 positions for July of 24 and with what we would consider the environment in Mayo Clinic, uh, all, all program people, unless something unfortunate would happen to someone, are going to go through all four years with us. Okay, next question we proceed as a new program. What directions are you most excited about expanding moving forward? How do you plan on staying connected with your new residents during their internal medicine prelim year? So their preliminary year will be on site if uh, you know in a, in a live uh, 
interview time frame before what happened is you would see the hospitals attached to the clinic. In my area, we go through one set of double doors and I'm on the floor compared to being in the clinic. So we move out to the floor. We also have one of our consultants, Dr. Warsowitz, who was on the floor every day in the hospital, and he will kind of be our link uh, back and forth. Dr. Hedges, if you get a chance to look at the links as I put her up as, and she's the program director in the preliminary year, she's very strong on trying to keep those links intact because our preliminary year at Mayo has uh, got a certain number of neurology PGY1s. It's got a certain number of anesthesiology PGY1s. It's got some other um, people who are going to be training on campus for many years beyond that first year. And those are links with each of the programs that they've already developed. And we plan to follow a similar model with that. Okay, thank you so much. So Renato, do we kind of open it up in case somebody has a verbal question or what is the usual profile? Um, typically, it's going to be um, in chat for the most okay. part. Um, and then feel free, um, just about kind of 30 seconds left, but feel free if you'd like to stay, you're more than welcome to field questions as more go along kind of during the next presentation. Okay. Yeah, we did have a few more questions. Oh. Um, let's see, the next question would be, being a new program, will you be accepting U.S. international medical graduates? So we, once again, follow the overall Mayo Clinic policy. They do allow that and they have the pathways which are on the website, which, uh, you know, when people have some of these questions, they are answered very clearly on those links that we supplied. But yes, we do accept candidates with, with different backgrounds like that. Great, and then our, another question was, do your residents spend, how much time do they spend on inpatient pediatric service? So currently there will be one required month on the pediatric inpatient service. They'll have a second month in pediatrics, but the board now requires at least one month of pediatrics be outpatient. So we have the outpatient center. And then the other option would be um, a person who wanted to do more pediatrics. They'll have the selective month. They'd be able to opt in for pediatric inpatient to be able to do that for an additional month. And then plus from the electives, we would also have opportunity for not only doing more pediatrics within that system and network we built in Jacksonville, but there is a very, very strong pediatric rehabilitation program in Rochester. And when you are a resident at one, Rochester, or at one Mayo Center, you have the opportunity to travel to the other centers to do rotations during your elective time. So that would be an option for people that have more pediatric interests. Dr. Atchison and Ms. Patrick Hart, I'd like to thank you so much for joining us. And there's a couple more questions in the chat. So if, if you'd like to stay, um, feel free to answer the questions in the chat. But just wanted to thank you so much for joining us. All right, we'll finish thank up. You. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody have a great night.